As of vMix 25, it's not just possible to stream to multiple destinations on the internet like YouTube and Facebook, you can also stream to your local network using Live LAN. So if you're looking for a way to get your content out to browsers on all sorts of devices on your local network, including smart TVs, this might just be what you're after. Welcome, I'm Heath from vMix. If you're new to vMix, be sure to download our free 60-day trial that will give you full access to vMix Pro, our top tier edition. You'll find it linked in the description. vMix comes in a range of different editions from basic HD right up to Pro and Max, and this feature is available in every single one of them. As I said earlier, Live LAN lets you stream out to multiple devices on your local network at the same time. This is particularly handy for places like campus classrooms and meeting rooms and overflow areas, particularly places that have modern smart TVs. It can also offer the benefit of keeping your stream private on your local network rather than distributing it out over the internet. There are a few things to note before we go further though. One, Live LAN uses up one of your three streaming destinations, so if you're already using three, this might not be a good option for you. Two, Live LAN has about 10 seconds of latency between sending it out and it appearing on your device. So if you're looking for lower latency distribution on your network, I'll discuss some alternatives and the pros and cons of these a little bit later on. And three, some older smart TVs may not work if they lack a web browser that supports HTML5 live streaming. So running a few tests with our free trial is probably a good idea. All right, with all that said, let's take a look at Live LAN. Here we are in the vMix interface with my camera that has embedded audio, a title, a video input, and a camera that's pointing at a TV in another room that we'll be sending our Live LAN stream to. From here, it's just a matter of going down to the stream settings, clicking on the destination, selecting Live LAN, and then setting up the quality, and then we can start our stream. Now, if any of this here is looking a little bit overwhelming, that's fine. We've got some great videos that go through streaming to multiple destinations, and I'll link those below. In this video, what we'll focus on is the streaming quality. You'll be streaming over the local network, so consider your available bandwidth and the number of screens that you'll want to stream to. If you select a 2.5 megabits per second bitrate, you'll use 2.5 megabits per second for each screen that you stream to. This is because vMix creates a dedicated streaming connection to each screen's browser. Now, some of you may ask, why haven't we implemented multicasting? And the key reason is that Live LAN works with HTML5 and HLS browser standards, and these don't support multicasting. Fortunately though, if you have a gigabit network, that's 1,000 megabits. So at 2.5 megabits per second, you could stream to a lot of screens without issue. That, of course, assumes that you have a dedicated network, though, and many of you won't. So just be mindful of what else you might have on your network that could also be using bandwidth. Consider things especially like IP cameras and that guy Steve who's always watching 4K Netflix. Bandwidth isn't the only consideration, though. You'll also need to determine how many streams your PC can comfortably handle. Now, we have successfully run test streams on up to 100 screens at once, but that was on a PC with a 6-core, 3 gigahertz CPU, which is pretty powerful. So in summary, every network and every device is different. So just like anything live streaming related, be sure to run plenty of tests. For this video, I've got a pretty solid PC too, and the network here is pretty fast. So I'm going to select a reasonably high quality 1080p60 stream at 6 megabits per second. There we go. And from here, I'll click on the Use Hardware Encoder, and I'll click on Save and Close. Now it's just a matter of hitting that Stream button. And as soon as it turns red, there we go, we're now streaming out on Live LAN. So if I go up to the Settings, and from here go to the Web Controller, here I'm presented with the website address of the Web Controller. If I was to double click on this, it'd open up the Web Controller in a browser. So I'm gonna do that to show you what I mean. Now, this might look a little bit overwhelming to some that aren't familiar with the web controller. We have videos that go into detail about this and I'll link them in the description. What we're interested in right now is the Live LAN tab. So I'll click on that. And here is our stream. If I press play, you'll start to see our feed, but it doesn't really make sense to do that here. It's better to do it on a TV elsewhere. So now I think what I'm gonna have to do is enlist the help of Tim. Hello. Hey. 
What would you like me to do? Do you reckon you could go out to the TV and see if you can set it up to take on this live stream? Yes. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put this up in the preview so that we can see what Tim's up to. It looks like... Ah, there he is, pointing at the TV. And he's been clever enough to plug a mouse into the television. Okay, he's going to the web browser now. And we've already prepared a link to the web controller, as you can see there. Going to the Live LAN tab. And now we'll click on that play button. And there we are. That's me, right there. Nailed it. Well done, Tim. Excellent work. All right, what we'll do is we'll shut him down now and switch back to my cameras. And there we are. So as I mentioned before, there's about 10 seconds of delay between vMix and the device you stream to. This is normal and it's unavoidable. So if you need to have lower latency, you could try using vMix Call, which can achieve under one second of latency, but it is limited to eight connected devices. And that's in our top tier Pro Edition. You will also likely need to connect a tablet or a PC or a phone to take the call. Um, a TV probably won't work on its own then you'll be able to cast from your device to the TV. So that may not be ideal for you. As an alternative solution, you could use something like an NDI device that accepts the NDI feed from vMix and converts it to HDMI that goes into the TV. Now, there are a couple of caveats to that. Obviously, you'll need to purchase a special device that converts from NDI to HDMI. And because NDI is a non-compressed format, it sits at about 100 megabits per second as opposed to the six that we were doing for this demo. So you might hit some limitations on your network. Now, NewTek have a tool called NDI Bridge that can be set to local mode and can compress the stream into NDI HX. This overcomes that bandwidth issue. You can have a look at their documentation for more information on how to do that. Well, that's it. That's how you can set up live LAN to stream content out to your local network and watch it on all sorts of devices, including smart TVs, with no other hardware required. Now, before I go, I just want to mention one last thing. Some of you may be wondering if live LAN uses the HLS standard to stream to the local network, can it also stream out to other streaming providers that support HLS? The answer to that question is no. It's specifically designed for streaming to browsers on the local network. Now, if you have any other questions about Live LAN, take a look at our help documentation. I've linked it in the description. You can also head to our website, vmix.com, to find help about all things vmix related. And if you have a specific question that you can't find an answer to, send us an email at support at vmix.com. Just avoid asking support questions in the YouTube comments because it's really hard for us to provide you with good help there. Instead, why not drop us a YouTube comment to let us know what you thought of the video? And if you have any interesting ideas or applications for using LiveLAN, share them with us. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.